Next up on the list of topics that I didn't actually think we'd be bringing up here heading into the 2023 NHL entry draft, we're going over to the Montreal Canadiens and once again talking about their first overall pick from last year, Uri Slavkovsky. Now, Slavkovsky's story has been documented, discussed, and gone over multiple times on this YouTube channel, on other YouTube channels, all over the internet, and everybody kind of knows that this is a guy who went first overall 2022. You could debate that 2022 was a weaker draft than 2023. But the reason we're talking about Slavkovsky today is because of a discourse that I saw started up on Twitter the other day, put up by Grant McKegg. Now, I think everybody is familiar with McKegg and the work that he does. He is a former Montreal scout who does stuff online now. He does a lot of Twitter things, talking about prospects and Canadians news. And he posted a Twitter thread the other day that got a lot of traction amongst Canadians fans and that made its way onto my timeline. I saw it and I was like, oh, that's actually a pretty interesting idea. Let's go out there and make a video about this. So, we're talking about Slavkovsky, but we're also talking about a prospect who is going to be drafted in this year's NHL Entry Draft, the projected third overall Swedish center, Leo Carlson. Now, the reason we're talking about this here is because Grant McKegg goes out there and depicts them right by each other, side by side, head to head, and he gives his own take. Take a look at this Twitter thread. There's a perception amongst hockey fans that Leo Carlson is a much better prospect than Uri Slavkovsky, presumably because he had more regular season points versus men. The only trait where I would give Leo a better mark is playmaking. Slavkovsky was infinitely better than Leo at the World Championships. Slavkovsky is taller and has 40 more pounds on Carlson. In his draft year, he was way better on the cycle and much more physical, a better skater, much better defensively, wins a lot more board battles, and shoots every bit as well. He was also several months younger. Give me Slavkovsky. Leo Carlson's even strength goals and assist totals were nothing spectacular. In fact, Yuri Slavkovsky scored as many goals at even strength in a lower scoring league. Carlson is a better playmaker, but not by much, and similar puck skills, but Slavkovsky with an extra 40 pounds to ward off NHLers. That doesn't really make sense. He probably should have put an extra comma there. Yeah, I kind of got confused reading that sentence. Grant McCagg says this, If you want a goal on the power play in an NHL regular season game, I'd probably give the edge to Carlson. You want a guy on the ice in every other instance, particularly in the playoffs? Give me Slavkovsky by a significant margin. Patience is required, and he will blossom soon enough. Now, the funny thing about Grant McCagg is that Time and time again, whenever he posts stuff about Canadians, players, and prospects, you always seem to get Habs fans that go out there and say, oh, don't listen to him, Grant McKegg is a bum, he's this, he's that, nobody likes his opinions anyway, because, I mean, there's a very vocal, I want to say majority, of people that don't like what it is that he has to say, and you have to just go into the comment section of my videos whenever we talk about Grant McKegg tweets to see that conclusion come up. Of course, for me personally, no disrespect to Grant McKegg and his work, it's just there have been some takes of his over the years that have been questionable, to say the least. But for this particular take, obviously Canadians fans love Canadians hockey, they love Canadians guys. And so, when Grant McKegg is going out there and pumping the tires on the first overall pick from last year, who happens to be a Montreal Canadien, it gets a lot of people talking in a very positive way. Oh yeah, Grant McKegg said something that I agree with. Grant McKegg had this great take, first take in a long time. And then you have yourselves the opposition. People going out there and saying, wait a minute, Grant, what are you talking about? This draft is weaker. Or excuse me, this year's draft is stronger than last year's draft. Slavkovsky, had he been available in this year's worth of players, he would not have gone first overall. And this is why I wanted to make this video in the first place, because if you go over to the draft profiles of both Yuri Slavkovsky and Leo Carlson, yes, Slavkovsky is bigger, he is stronger, he plays on the wing, whereas Carlson plays center, so there's a little bit of a difference there, but Yuri Slavkovsky had 10 points in 31 Liga games played. Carlson had 25 points in 44 SHL games played. The production was on Carlson's side as a center who was relied upon a little bit more, and even in the playoffs you could see that Carlson 
pretty much exploded offensively, 9 points, 13 games. You could say the same thing about Uri Slavkovsky because his playoff run with TPS was also very strong. But during all the international tournaments, that is where Leo Carlson falters in comparison to Uri. Uri at the World Championships was over a point per game. Carlson was not. Uri also was a goal a game at the Olympic Games. Now, to be fair, the Olympics are a little bit of a different competition. You don't have NHL caliber guys going over there, so it's not the easiest to evaluate talent-wise. But, in terms of international showcases, it is easy to see that from the numbers, Yuri Slavkovsky had a better showcase than Leo Carlson. However, when it comes to the individual aspects that Grant McHagg labels out, talks about the goals, even strength, physicality, skater, etc., there's a lot of debate amongst Canadians fans I've seen in the replies to this Twitter thread, bringing up what other scouting outlets had to have said. This is a reply from, I'm just going to call him George because it's G-O-E-R-G-E. -E. He replies to Grant saying this, Where would you rank Slavkovsky in this year's draft? In the second to fourth overall range? And then you have yourselves a reply from Fred saying, Hey, The Athletic already did this exercise and they had Slavkovsky at number seven if they blended last year's prospect pool with this year's prospect pool. And they said that Slavkovsky was already number one in 2022. So according to the folks over on The Athletic, last year's draft was so much weaker than this year's draft that there are names like, of course, you'd have Connor Bedard, Matvey Mishkov, I'd assume, Leo Carlson, Adam Fantilli, that all should have been ranked above the first guys in last year's draft. And that's sort of where this entire idea comes from in the first place. It's why Grant McKegg is making this Twitter thread where he's giving his own two cents. Yeah, all this talk, all this conversing about Carlson being a better prospect, I don't buy it. And it's why he voiced his opinion, going out there and stating the contrary. And so, for me personally, if you had to ask me, okay, Slavkovsky versus Carlson, where do you see their potentials lying? I'd say that when it comes to Uri, he has such a unique blend of skill and physicality and size that if he maxes out to what he could potentially be, I'd say that his prime is maybe at the same level as what I would define Leo Carlson's prime to be. Carlson, as we've talked about, he is a big, strong, powerful center with a great wrist shot. If everything works out for Carlson, he could be Matt Sundin 2.0. Not necessarily because he'll be an absolute legend Hall of Fame player, but because he could be that same sort of type of player. Style is a comparison, you know? That's what I'm getting at over here. So if Leo Carlson is what a Matt Sundin was at one point, I could confidently say I wouldn't be surprised if he reached that type of a ceiling. For Yuri Slavkovsky... I honestly see a similar ceiling, more so of that defensively responsible physical guy with some goal-scoring touch to his game too, but to me, the difficulty is the likelihood. Yuri Slavkovsky being as good as he is or having as much potential as he has, I don't really see the likelihood of him reaching that potential to be as concrete as Leo Carlson's likelihood of him reaching his potential. I'd say that Leo Carlson maybe has a 5.5 or a 6 out of 10 chance to be the player that we think he could be. For Slavkovsky, I'd maybe say that's a 4.5 or a 4 out of 10. It's a very specific point to make, but I think it's one where it articulates the difference in why you would evaluate these players in the ways that you would, because I just don't see Slavkovsky's ceiling being as easily attainable as Leo Carlson's ceiling is as a center who's got all these playmaking tools and the wrist shot and defensive responsibility, despite being smaller and despite having fewer 5v5 points in the SHL this season than year I had in the Liga. So that's kind of my perspective on the entire thing. I see their similarities in terms of why people are talking about them. But if you were to ask me if you would rank Slavkovsky over Carlson, if you assume Slavkovsky was eligible this year, I'd probably say no. In fact, I'd go Bedard, maybe Mishkov. I'd say Mishkov number two. I like that a lot. I'd go Bedard, Mishkov, Fantilli, Carlson, and then I'd probably put even Shane Wright, honestly. <laughs> like... I don't know, man. I still really believe in Shane Wright, but I didn't want to make this video an anti Yuri Slavkovsky video. Oh, man, all the Habs fans are going to get pissed off at me in the comments now, aren't they? 
Either way, because I know we got a lot of Habs fans on this channel, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What are your opinions about the idea of Yaris Levkovsky being a better prospect than Leo Carlson? Who would you rather have if you were to choose one over the other? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.